This tutorial is about frequency separation in Photoshop, but it is not my aim to discuss the basis of this technique. I only intend to show here a way to optimize the frequency separation retouching workflow in Photoshop. The tutorial has two rounds. In the first round, I'll show you my FS Retouch Photoshop action running here with step-by-step -step playback option. It does not make any retouch, only creates a structure of layers to streamline the workflow in the next round. Thus, for every retouching job, one can save up to 20 minutes and even more in batch processing. In the second round, you can watch an effective session of the manual retouching process. You will learn to use the structure of layers previously created. Also, you will get instructions on choosing and setting the appropriate tools and brushes. All these contribute to an impressive streamlining of the retouching workflow. Make four copies of the background layer. The color and toning layer converted to smart object will be the base for the low frequency image data. Apply the Gaussian blur filter. Set radius to the pixel's value with which all the fine details of the image are blurred. Keep it in mind, you need to use the same value later. Convert details and texture high pass layer to smart object. Apply the high pass filter. Set radius to the same pixels value used for the Gaussian blur effect applied to the color and toning layer. Set layer opacity to 50%. Apply image command to set this layer as a base for high frequency data for 16 bits per channel images. Apply image command to set this layer as a base for high frequency data for 8 bits per channel images. Place all the detail and texture layers in a new group. Inside of this group, keep visible only the layer you intend to use as the base for the high frequency data. Apply linear light blending mode. Place above a new empty layer. Duplicate color and toning layer and name it surface blur. Delete Gaussian Blur Effect. Apply the Surface Blur Filter. Set Threshold to Levels 2. Add a Hide All Mask. Place above a new empty layer. Place selected layers in a new group, color and toning group. Place selected layers in a new group, 
FS group. Create the adjustments group by grouping three adjustment layers, vibrance, levels, and curves. Include the selected groups in retouch group. FS Retouch action stops here. The automated part of the retouching process has finished. It was built a layer structure to streamline the retouching workflow in the next round. The first round is over. Before start retouching, you must precisely decide what you need to do. In this particular case, the picture was taken outdoors on a sunny day. Therefore, there are two accentuated differences between bright and shaded areas. To correct this must be used color and toning group that is the low frequency section of this file. Skin imperfections and some hair problems will be solved working inside the high frequency section. For other retouching purposes such as color correction, selective sharpening or blurring, local shining and so on, will be used the adjustments group. The surface blur layer included in color and toning group has the same utility. I will talk about this later. To make retouching more flexible and non-destructive, I work in a separate layer placed on top of the low frequency section. Usually, I prefer here a simple brush set on low hardness, medium opacity and low flow. It seems to me the best way to even out color and tones. The healing brush tool, very soft, sampling set to current and below, can also be an option. For the low frequency section, I do not recommend the clone stamp tool, although many retouchers are accustomed to using it currently. For an effective retouch, proceed as follows. Open Lasso tool and select the area to be corrected. To preset the correct feathering, use Select and Mask command. Adjust the feather value until the selection is blurred enough. Retain this value for the subsequent selections. Open a simple brush tool and set it on medium opacity and low flow. Adjust conveniently brush size and set a low hardness. Sample an appropriate color, paint inside the selection. Apply Gaussian Blur filter and adjust the radius value until you get the effect you want. You may use the same procedure if your option is Healing Brush tool. Just remember to set sampling to current and below and to use a soft brush. For diffusion, it could be helpful to experiment different values. Repeat the procedure in every area you want to make corrections.
the advantage of working on a separate layer is obvious. At any time, you can make adjustments and corrections or even resume the entire procedure without affecting the low frequency layer. For the same reason, when work on a high frequency section, it's helpful to use a separate layer placed just above the details and texture group. Before start working on it, I will keep visible only one of three layers in the details and texture group. For 8 bits per channel images, like this one, the correct choice is the details and texture subtract layer. For 16 bits per channel images, you must choose the details and texture add layer. I will comment later about the utility of the details and texture high pass layer. For now, I keep it hidden. For this task, I prefer the clone stamp tool. Medium to low hardness, medium opacity, medium to low flow, sampling set to current and below. The healing brush tool, medium hardness, sampling set to current and below, can also be an option. Let's start. What about the details and texture high pass layer? It is well known. The use of the high pass filter in a frequency separation is possible, but not very recommended. The separation of the high and low spatial frequencies of the image can be slightly inaccurate. Just enough to compromise the quality of the subsequent retouch. But this affects mainly the brightest pixels, which will be grayed out. Therefore, use smartly this situation can be turned into a beneficial one. For instance, when you retouch some overexposed skin areas, the skin will get toned down and will look more matte. The smart way is to use together apply image and high pass filter. That's why the details and texture high pass layer is here. Let's see how to do it. Make the details and texture high pass layer visible and active. Add a hide all mask. Paint with a soft white brush in the areas you want to apply high pass filter. Load the mask as a selection. Keep this selection active and make the needed corrections on the details and texture retouch layer. Invert selection and use it to mask the details and texture subtract layer. Thus, the two different effects applied to these layers will not overlap. Let's go back to the surface blur layer. Seems odd, but smart blur filter applied here with low threshold values sharpens rather than blurs the details. Here, for instance, this effect can be used to make the pendant shiny. Set threshold at its minimum value. Paint over the black mask with a white brush.
can be done the same on the hair. To blur some image areas, for instance in the background, may be used the same filter. Duplicate this layer and fill the mask with black. Paint over with a soft white brush. Be careful to not overlap the unmasked area with that one on the layer below. Adjust radius and threshold until you get the result you want. For other retouching purposes, use the adjustments group. For instance, I often use the curves adjustment layer to match the skin tone to the skin from another image, or even from an area of the same image. I'll show you how to do it in another tutorial. Subscribe to be notified.